This is fourth iteration of the 3DFX Voodoo series reviews. This time, it's about Voodoo Benshi. I've never had a Voodoo Benshi, nor I ever wanted one, so this is gonna be quite interesting even for me. Today, I've got Diamond Monster Fusion AGP, Creative 3D Blaster PCI, and some random Voodoo Benshi. The Benchy is 3DFX's second attempt to make a combined 2D 3D VJ card based on their other technology. The Voodoo Rush was based on the Voodoo Graphics and it was a dumpster fire. The Voodoo Benshi was based on the Voodoo 2 and we're yet to find out how good the card was. Since the Benshi was released at the end of 1998, I wanted to use some CPU from about the same time. I'm gonna use slot 1 Pentium 3 700MHz in motherboard with Intel BX chipset of course and half gig of RAM. The Benchy is basically a cut down version of the Voodoo 2 with a 2D card at it. The Voodoo 2's got 3 chips on board, 1 pixel and 2 texel chips clocked at 90MHz. Unlike the Voodoo Rush which used separate chips for 2D and 3D, this time 3DFX took one pixel bit and one texel bit from the Voodoo 2, newly developed 2D chip, smashed all of them together into one sleeker chip, clocked it a little bit higher, increased the memory from 12 to 16 megabytes, and there you have it, the Voodoo Benchy. 3D Blaster or other standard Benchies are clocked at 100 MHz GPU and memory. Diamond made some changes to the board and instead of SD RAM clocked at 100 MHz, which was used by the rest of the lot, the Fusion has SG RAM clocked at 125 MHz and slightly better cooled GPU clocked at 110 MHz. There was yet another card that was clocked much higher than the standard Benchy and that was made by Gigabyte. The GPU was clocked at 110 MHz, same as the Diamond, but Gigabyte went a little bit farther and clocked the memory at 130 MHz. Diamond Monster Fusion cost 150 US dollars when new. It cost exactly the same as the 8 megabyte Monster 3D2, so I wonder if it was worth the price of the Voodoo 2 Monster. Diamond claims you'll get outrageous 3D performance out of the Monster Fusion, and we'll see about that in a moment. As for the Creative 3D Blaster, I haven't found any other info, but it seems it cost only 100 US dollars. Right off the bat, I had lots of problems with drivers. After the Windows 9 to 8 clean install, I tried all possible drivers I could find, all cards I've got, and I couldn't set neither card to higher resolution than 800 by 616 colors. The culprit was a monitor driver. I had to change the default monitor to pretty much anything else. Never experienced problem like this before. While testing the cards further, I found out 800 by 600 resolution doesn't work with reference drivers for some reason, but works fine with official diamond or creative drivers. I tried all possible games in DOS that support Glide, and pretty much none was working. Even if the 3DFX card was detected, it usually ended up like this. Well, I've tested the cards only in a couple of benchmarks, but they show quite good results. According to these, the Benchy is pretty much the best 2D card of the era. The picture quality is also top notch. Can't believe this is something that came out of the 3DFX lab after the Voodoo Rush disaster. First, let's have a look at some problems I had. Return to Castle Wolfenstein doesn't look very appealing, does it? I had to mess around with GL drivers again to get it working at least in 640x480. However, all your resolutions were not filling the screen properly no matter what GL driver I used. Forsaken crashed with this dialogue every time I quit the game and wanted to start it up again. Delete and config files didn't help and I had to reinstall the game every single time I wanted to run it for the second time. Another problem was with shutting down the rig. I'm using ATX motherboard with ATX power supply and with the card in the slot, Windows just refused to turn off the computer. Now to the results. First, let's have a look at how the 3D Blaster did. Yep, 
Undercrooked Monster's performance is exactly the same as the 3D Blasters or the other Benchies I've got. Benchy cards don't take advantage of the AGP slot in any way, so there is no actual benefit using AGP cards in this case. Now to the monster. Since the monster is clocked a lot higher, it should be a lot faster too. Let's have a gander. I also wanted to know how the card can endure 1600 by 1200 resolution, and it wasn't exactly anything you'd like to use for gaming. If you look at the chart, the Benchy could outperform single Voodoo 2 in some games that didn't utilize second Texo chip in the Voodoo 2. However, the Voodoo 2 in the Solar setup was just unbeatable. I've included the TNT and TNT2 Ultra just for comparison. The TNT2 was much faster than the Benchy in most games I've tested, but still couldn't reach the level of two Voodoo 2s. Was the Benchy worth the price then? Well, if you were into hardcore gaming, definitely not, it wasn't. Getting a separate 2D card and one single Voodoo 2 was a better choice, but if you wanted the top performance, you'd get two Voodoo 2s. Getting a separate 2D card and one single Voodoo 2 was a better choice, but if you wanted the top performance, you'd get two Voodoo 2s. Moreover, it had some issues with 3D graphics in Wolfenstein and the problem with Forsaken, and who knows what other issues you could come across. But if you wanted a combination of the best 2D cards of the time and quite potent 3D cards, it was definitely worth it. But I'd get Diamond Monster Fusion or Gigabyte, not the basic 100MHz versions. And that's it for today. I'm gonna let all the benchmarks run in 1024x768. Have fun and cheers.